Who would have thunk it? Coming up off another Chargers and Browns instant classic. That don't even sound right. But we won't stick and stay on this too long. Got other things on the horizon. Monday night matchup with the uh, Denver Broncos who are in almost complete disarray. We ain't going to overlook that though. We are the Chargers. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, anyway, what's going on people? Welcome to another edition of I Got 5 on it. It's your boy Craig. And uh, without further uh, delay, let's jump right into it. First item on the docket is uh, Joe's Balancing Act. Who went into this game thinking that the uh, Chargers would have 34 passing attempts accompanied by 34 rushing attempts? Not I. Not if you've been paying attention to the first few weeks of the season. Now, if there was going to be a game where they rammed it down someone's throat, pause, um, it would have been last week against the Houston Texans. Uh, the rushing game did show some improvements, but not nearly to the extent that i wanted to see it but again incremental growth and then they take a freaking jet to mars this week and put it on the browns when you're talking about austin eckler and joshua kelly out rushing um kareem hunt and nick chubb you're saying a whole lot and boy from my estimation from what i've seen it it appears, I'm sorry, to look like uh, there was a switch in the offensive game plan as far as scheme is concerned, which better fits the personnel. And who would think that the Chargers would make those type of adjustments based on what we've seen so far this year? Less zone run com concepts, more downhill power, man running. And boy, did that pay off. Who we um, think of it this way. You got Jamari Sawyer, who's not known for his athletic prowess, but is strong like bull. Uh, Matt Filer, who would never be confused for a uh, top tier elite athlete. But look, man, dude plays in the NFL, so no disrespect. And then you went those few weeks there where he got a little bit of Corey Lindsley and um, uh, Will Clapp was in there manning the position and nowhere near the athlete that Corey is. So it makes a little bit more sense now why the run game wasn't as effective, even though, to be honest with you, they weren't leaning on it a whole lot anyway. There wasn't a real chance for it to get in the rhythm, but I'm not going to sit here and defend the blocking because it was pretty, pretty atrocious. Got guys in the backfield almost instantly talking about penetration on the snap. And that's not the case the last couple weeks, especially not against the Browns. So bravo, Joe Lombardi. Let's keep this train going. And me being the old school football uh, guy that I am, I appreciate the running game above all else. It's just, even though it was a former wide receiver, before that I was a running back. I love to see Will being imposed in the running game. So, again, let's keep that pushing. Need more of it. Which leads me into number two, which is um, time to upgrade to a PS5. Unplug that Sony PS4 and put that bad boy in the closet. Go trade it in. Do whatever you got to do. Just time to get rid of it. Make the move. There's no reason why Sony Michelle should be in any game right now. At all. The luster is worn off after two weeks. And at this point, why would you not play Isaiah Spiller in the RB3 role? For the first few weeks, I was hearing and seeing things about there being questions in regards to him in uh, pass blocking, blitz pickup stuff. And go back and watch his Texas A&M film every year. Growth as a pass protector in blitz pickup. Uh, Jamie actually reminded me that he actually plays some fullback a little bit at times at A&M. So the dude's not afraid of contact whatsoever. Doesn't shy away from it. And at times it can be to his detriment as a runner. But I don't believe that he got to the NFL and suddenly forgot how to do it when he was improving on it in college. And you know that most running backs in the college ranks aren't all that great at blitz pickup because they don't practice it a ton. So if you want to get the dude involved, which I think is important because down the stretch run, if you're going to be used, utilizing the running game, which you should, and you're going to have a three headed monster, then your third back needs to get some burn in the running game because you want him to have game reps so again he can get a feel for it and i mean running um the running game is a lot like 
QB in, man. You got to develop a rhythm. And when you're not playing for weeks at a time, you can't expect to just toss the dude in there late in the season and say, here, kid, um, carry it. In the event that someone does get nicked up and he has to get extensive carries, then you want him to be someone that's had the experience of playing in the NFL game to have a feel for it. So here's looking at you, whoever is making the personnel decisions. Uh, it's time to let the kid go. Take the training wheels off. If he's not ready now, when will he be? And honestly, at this point, what purpose does Sony Michelle serve? It's just a name. Uh, it made sense a week before the season. You didn't expect him to become a free agent. He was cut. And Joshua Kelly apparently hadn't taken a foothold as the RB2 yet, even though he, you know, had glowing reviews in camp and during the offseason. And uh, Spiller, from all accounts, hadn't separated himself and was still like kind of on that learning curve, a rookie learning curve. But you could understand that. At this point, Sony's just taking up space in the room. And uh, you know, if you want to have him as someone who's sticking around again, just in the event of an injury, then I mean, I guess, but he is no longer a viable option. If anything, he's stuck in the mud and slows in the off, slowing the offense down. And Joshua Kelly comes out and performs more than admirably, admirably last week in a tandem with Austin Eckler. So let's just keep it moving. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. Three ski, man. Uh, yo, Keenan. Let's tighten up that Allen wrench. I know that was super corny. Because technically you use the Allen wrench to tighten other things up. But that's what I came up with. It's quick. It wasn't all that creative. Forgive me. I'm not going to hit all these out of the park. Slay jumping on Twitter during the game. And uh, providing colorful commentary about the uh decision to go for it on fourth and one two whatever the hell that was <sighs> on that final offensive possession uh I i've gotten a bunch of comments about it look i get it some people like the idea of players being honest and voicing their opinions but there's an optic to this that just doesn't just doesn't come off well you're basically publicly questioning your head coach there's a reason why that tweet came down, by the way. And then Staley comes out and talks about it a little bit and says that they're closer now and they had a meeting about it. I, I bet you did have a meeting about it. And uh, do I think that it was all hugs and Hallmark cards? Well, knowing Staley, it wasn't over the top. But in his Staley way, I'm sure he got his point across and Keenan understood. And I'm going to be honest with you, uh, Slay. This is an area we're going to explore later on down the line. We've mentioned it here in the past. I'm not all that certain about the prospects of him being back next year. Now, a few games ago, if you would have asked me that, I would have felt differently because they couldn't move the ball consistently. Uh, Mike was getting doubled up and they were having issues getting the ball to other receivers. So I felt like Slate might have a little leverage when we talk about, uh, you know, him potentially taking a pay cut next year. But, uh... If the running game gets going, Mike Williams keeps going for over a buck every game. And, you know, they keep incorporating Gerald Everett. And if Joshua Palmer comes along at any point, eek. Might want to tread a little bit more lightly with your words, man. Uh, make sure you're being a team guy. And also, by the way, it just doesn't look great having a team captain publicly questioning the coach. So keep that in mind. But, you know. Something to keep an eye on. Okay, so you know we had to talk about it. I alluded to it on number three. So let's just get right to it here in the Forsky. The uh, BSB experience. I am still not riding with that decision. I'm just not. From a football standpoint, it made absolutely no sense. And you'll get the people talking about, hey, it's Justin Herbert. It's Mike Williams uh, against a rookie corner. I hear all that. You may not even like the play call. I'll take it a step further. On that play, backside of it, you can question whether or not it would have been a good throw to him anyway based on his performance throughout the game. He had some drops. Josh Palmer literally spins the corner like a top on his slant route in which Gerald Everett 
uh, ran uh, around to the flat right underneath it and Palmer comes screaming wide open wide open but you can tell that that play was designed specifically for Mike Will because Herbert never looks anywhere else um, if he takes a tick scans back over to the left side he sees Palmer now whether or not he catches it based on his performance throughout the game eh, that's questionable but anyway I digress the decision was nuts like payday nuts uh, I don't care what the analytics say about that. You don't do that. Just consider what happened before then. You had Jacoby Brissett, who showed himself to be who he is, in the clutch. Because this has happened now a few times. I think he has a few fourth quarter uh, interceptions to help blow games. Is that just this year? Uh, I've got to look the stat up. But it's kind of his thing. It's his jam. Uh, instead of Forcing that dude to drive 60 yards to get in the field goal range for a kid who was kicking 60 yarders before the game started, you elected to chance it to get two yards. And if you didn't get it, basically having the dude already be in field goal range, all they needed was another 10 to 15 yards. And uh, they pretty much got what they needed to get in range. And the kid who had been eight for eight leading up to the game went 0 for 2 and good freaking thing that he decided he needed to suck that day maybe it was the bugs what were those thing, things called i don't know I, I said the men in black bugs uh i, I don't remember what they call them it's like the freaking uh 2.0 plague locusts uh the seventh plague i don't know it was it was crazy it didn't seem like it affected dudes during the game i don't know what k york's issue was but uh glad uh he had an off day on sunday because uh we would be having a completely different conversation today had he made that kick. And all of y'all that are defending the decision saying, hey, it worked out. Well, cool. It almost didn't. And if it did, I'm curious to know what your reaction would have been. Would you still be like, hey, it's fourth and Staley. Uh, that's what he does. Well, yeah, it's what he did last year, but that's not been the case in 2022. He's been a little bit more conservative than in year one and if you're not paying attention to that then fine you can just ignore it i get how some people feel about context and facts they would rather just say you know this is what i feel so it's what it is but anyway brandon's walking a very very fine line between like crazy like a fox and just like nutty buddy i like the dude but I'm already getting tired of my friends sending me the screenshots of my hashtag go get day bowl tweets. It's getting old. And Brandon, you're not helping me, man. I'm riding with you. I got your back. But let's keep it thorough moving forward, please. Please help me. Help me help you. But ultimately, help me stop these freaking texts from coming my way, dog. It's getting annoying. I'm pretty much over it. Let's stop this. Yes. Please. By all means, number five, let Russ cook that ramen because I'm sure it's probably going to be overboiled to where it's all mushy and then the consistency screwed up and it tastes like crap. It's more of a soup than anything. Isn't it amazing how uh, this lat injury that he had popped up out of the blue because apparently your back is connected to your eyeballs and uh it affects your reads never knew that i'm not a doctor but i want to consult with one about that if any of you guys are in the medical field let me know because of never anything i learned in uh school at all about that but hey is what it is you want to know what was funny about last Thursday night's game Richard Sherman being a part of it because he had to have been suffering PTSD he saw it happen again the Broncos inside the red zone Russell Wilson dropping back throwing a ball that wasn't picked but instead of running the ball and I guess maybe now that I think about it if Melvin Gordon's your running back it's not the same as having beast mode and you definitely don't want to give Mel the ball inside the five because we know what the results of uh, that will probably yield so 
I mean, I get it, but it was still really funny watching uh, Richard Sherman watch that basically all over again. It had to cause some sort of flashbacks, but uh, I don't care, man. The, the Broncos are a mess right now. One of my coworkers is a Broncos fan. I actually have a coworker from each of our rivals within the division. It's really weird how they worked out. I don't know if they're having buyer's remorse right now or not, but offensively, they're a mess. Defense is still good, though, and I'm not just going to overlook the fact that, like I said before, we are the Chargers, and we have this thing where we tend to make games that shouldn't be very difficult more than difficult, and it's a division game, so you can't overlook that either. So respect to the Broncos in that regard. I really hope Keenan comes back. Because uh, if you think Mike Williams is going to go out there and be mossing a PS2, Patrick Sertain uh, Jr., then you got it all mixed up. Homie's a stud. Um, in his class, uh, J.C. Horn was my favorite corner. And then, of course, behind that came Zion. But PS2 was in the mix for one or two honestly just putting all bias aside from a skill standpoint he's got the size and athleticism to run with mike i mean running with mike isn't all that difficult but as far as size goes ball skill ain't gonna be an easy day for the man uh so having keenan back in the fold is going to help tremendously and um again hopefully we can just keep the running game pumping and provide some balance because it was awesome having Herbo kept clean last week against opponents like uh, Jadavian Clowney and Miles Garrett. Uh, Jamari Sawyer did his thing last week. Uh, Garrett did get some pressure, but the Chargers did a really good job at helping him out. But also Herbert doing his thing in the pocket. His pocket presence has become like top tier. Um, year one, it was a little shaky, but man, in these last two, he has really, really turned it on. Happy to see it. But uh, outside of that, I'm just going to say it, man. I really feel like this is the game the Chargers have to have. You get up to four and two in the division. You're still a game behind the, the uh, Chiefs. And we ain't even going to get into that Raiders collapse. You kind of saw it coming. You can spot the Chiefs 17. It doesn't really matter. There are a bunch of things that are going to end up working in their favor, particularly at home. But we won't get into that. And it's, it's Mahomes as a quarterback. And as much as I bag on Kermy, the dude is freaking awesome. Just plays football like it's in the backyard. Some of his throws are nuts. Just the arm angles and stuff like that. Like Herbert makes some crazy throws. Like his deep balls. Ooh, pause. Um, you know, the sidearm stuff here and there that he does. The the placement, all fantastic. But the angles and accuracy that Mahomes has the trajectory on some of those throws is just eh, just whatever but anyway ain't about the Chiefs right now at home handle your business beat up on Russ and the boys and um let's go into the next week at four and two with a positive outlook on things and continuing to move forward start to get some guys back healthy we ain't gonna see Joey for a while so just park that off to the side and Whatever, but the more wins you can stack up, of course, the better your position and come playoff time. And then, uh, you know, hopefully, as we get later into the year, some of these big names start to come back. We don't know what the deal with Slater is going to be yet. They haven't completely X'd him out for the remainder of the year. So, yeah, it could happen. But anyway, that's it for me, man. Look, I appreciate y'all. Let me sit here and rant as I do. Uh... Until the next time you know who it is, your boy. And no matter what, I will always be back with five of them thanks. Fresh out the oven. Till the next one. Take it easy. Gone.